Uh, so this is part two of my um, central heat and revamp and I'm just going to uh, explain a little bit more detail about the setup and what Home Assistant does and what changes I've made from before to now. So again I'm going to spin you around and we'll go through it in a little bit more detail. So we've got a heat meter down here and a flow return sensor that's linked into the heat, heat meter. The heat meter is also linked into the open energy monitoring system uh, from openenergymonitor.org. Uh, the guys Tristan and Glenn are really good um, at set, setting up a third party system that can monitor any heat pump. It doesn't control your heat pump, it just monitors it. Uh, so you can get true reading of COPS and energy input and output. Um, the heating's actually on at the moment. So the main part of my system is these three uh, relay boxes, wireless relay boxes. I used to run my system with Shelly uh, relays, little Shelly relays before, and um, that worked fine. Um, but I've just upgraded really uh, into something a bit more uh, looks a bit nicer and a bit more reliable and more I'll get more functions out of it so I've actually got 12 uh, channels that I can run independently uh, or collectively uh, with an automation from home assistant so as we can see we've got a, a red light going on here so this is my call for heat that I've requested from Home Assistant. Um, so go into the computer I have actually here in the garage. Um, as you can see, I've got a call for normal heating. I know the heat pump's on because it's changed. It's actually changed color. I've uh, got some lights going on as well. So those buttons there are override buttons. I will show you also what it looks like on my phone or a phone. So I can adjust the room temperature here by turning it up and down. I've got some presets that I've set up and I can schedule those presets or I can actually schedule the temperature as well. Um, so these are my capacity uh, indicators of how much I've actually got in my hot water and my heat bank. Uh, this is my COP live. I'm picking this data up from open energy monitoring and the heat pump, uh, heat meter. This is my system status of what's going on so we can see because it's turned yellow that we have normal heating running and the actual heat pump is running. Uh, I've overridden the heating by giving it a boost. And then we've got some more information from those sensors on the tank. Got the heating panel, heating flow return DT, and my temperature sensors and the heat pump status and I can I've got running hours how many times it's been on and off uh, during a day week year uh, and got some weather data and then I've got some schedules so what I can do is um, Obviously I can set up schedules to bring my heating and hot water on. As I said in the previous video, I can turn my hot water on at night when I've got a cheaper rate. But I can also bring in um, data from the weather, the national grid, um, and my tariff. So if you were like on uh, an agile tariff, for, for example, uh, and you've got some near zero or negative prices you could then set up an automation to uh, switch the eddy on for, for example i mean i can see the eddy 
uh, and all the my energy equipment on home assistant as well and every bit of information that uh, the my energy equipment gives or a sensor or a heat meter becomes a what they call an entity and that entity uh, you can then play with you can turn it into an automation you can create uh, chain links so and if then then that condition so if that sensor is reading or broken a threshold of 25 degrees and above I want you to turn this pump on and I want you to open this valve and through that I'm creating um, trying to create more efficient automations on my system so I don't have to keep playing with it for me it's just a nerdy thing I just like I just like to do stuff like this and try and squeeze as much information and efficiency out of it but from an engineer's point of view it's good to see the correlations of sensors and what you do and how uh, changing something changing a, f a flow or a valve can have an influence on the efficiency of the system but it is automated it's a bit of a beast now I started it three or four years ago uh, sort of around Covid time I think um, a good friend of mine Richard Burrows uh, from Midwest Plumbing and Heating we were uh, chatting a lot over that Covid period and he's got a similar setup on his own property um, but yeah I've to do to do my hydraulics my hydraulics that I've got here would be very very difficult with an off-the-shelf heating product or controller or time switch the only way I've been able to achieve what I can do um, is through home assistant so I hope that helps um, home assistant is a totally different beast uh, in itself and I'm not a total expert on it at all uh, I've just picked up a lot of information and clues and uh, I've had a lot of help from other people to to get to the point where I am today but I, I am now at a, a point where I can create my own entities and sensors and automations and everything else and I'm always driving trying to think of the latest uh, automation uh, to create for example, like when the grid, when the national grid goes really dirty, uh, I can drop my heat pumps capacity down by 30%. So effectively I'm telling it to back off and it's running, or I could turn it off, or where I really want to be going and when I get my next heat pump, I'm hoping to do this, is um, I want to start being able being able to manipulate the flow temperature directly to the unit under certain conditions thank you for watching please like and subscribe there's more to come but for now that's where i'm going to leave it today